Hi, I'm Rick Dior. And that little demo there was all about hi-hat splashing, one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> so this is something uh, when I was growing up that I was fascinated with. I was always trying to mimic some of my favorite drummers that I'd hear. Uh, Zigaboo with the meters, uh, Lenny White, who played with Return to Forever, David Garibaldi with Tower of Power, obviously Clyde Stubblefield with James Brown, uh, a great drummer that not a lot of people know of, Tiki Fullwood uh, for the Ohio players, great hi-hat work. Another guy was Harvey Mason, if you ever listen to some of those old Headhunters records, the, uh, the Herbie Hancock stuff. So, so all these guys um, were just hi-hat masters in that kind of R&B funk style. Of course, Steve Gadd, you don't want to leave him out. So today we're going to talk about this uh, concept and how I do it and what I do to teach it, what I used to teach it and practice it. So we'll be using page seven like we have been in the last couple lessons from my book to do this. So if you have the book, turn to page seven. I'll put some of this on the screen so you can see it. Now any book with 16th note rhythms works really, really well. So the Gary Chester New Breed book works good. The Louis Belson books uh, work great. Uh, any, anything that has 16th note rhythms. You want to go with something that has single note rhythms, not double note rhythms, which will become obvious uh, why we're doing that in a minute. First, let's talk about the technique of it. So I try to teach my students, and I try to play like this myself, where I'm not opening the hi-hat all the way when I'm splashing like this. I kind of just release the tension from my foot just a little bit like that. So. you're doing this, in my opinion, that's too much. It's too loud. Uh, it's too open. Now, you can do single notes like that. All right, so those things work okay. But when you're doing quick, rapid notes, you want to just release pressure probably can't even barely see my foot moving there. And that's the technique we'll use today to do that. So the first way I like to teach this is just with a basic two and four groove on the snare drum like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to play these rhythms as opens or chokes, whatever you want to call them. So a good tempo to start out for this is quarter note equals 104. And of course, you can do it slower. And I'll probably do it uh, at this tempo and then slow it down for you because there's some complex rhythms that have to happen with the right hand. But we'll just start out with this tempo. I'll put the metronome on 16ths so you can hear the subdivision. One, two. So that's the first three lines or so. So you see how I'm barely taking my foot off that pedal, very relaxed. Now my right hand has to play some complex rhythms to make those chokes happen. So we're going to slow it down to around 80 for you so you can see how that works. So hopefully you can see those different 16th note rhythms I have to play to fill in in the right hand to get those 
chokes to happen. All right, now you can also do it where you're not playing every single one. You can pick and choose. We'll do it faster now at 1, 16 or so, and I'll show you how that would work. So you see, I'm picking and choosing which ones I play. And that's more musical. You know, you don't want to go into onto a gig and start playing every single thing. Choked, it gets super monotonous. So, uh, you know, a lot of these exercises are that, just exercises to get it so you can play those opens wherever you desire to play them. The next step is to do 16th notes on the hi-hat. And this is trickier because uh, you're going to be alternating and having to catch those. Now, when you see something that's on the beat, in other words, uh, with the back beat and a hi-hat together, you can come over and play a flat flam like this. All right, so we'll try this at 108. One, two... Next we come to the hard stuff. So now we're going to do, uh, instead of doubling the hi-hat and the bass drum, we're going to play the hi-hat independently of the bass drum. So a good way to do this is do like a samba bass drum pattern. And we'll keep the bass drum going like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to play 16th notes on the hi-hat and the written rhythms I'm going to accent like this. And then once I learn that, what we're going to do is we're going to do the chokes on those written rhythms, which is pretty tricky. So it's tricky because you're having to uh, basically coordinate your hi-hat, your left foot, along with your right foot to get those chokes. So we'll play that for you. One, two, one, two. a little farther with the rhythms this time. So that's a really, really difficult exercise to practice. And normally, uh, well, not normally, but if you play like in a jazz fusion context, you're probably going to have to play that a little quicker. So it's good to practice that as fast as, you know, 124. So I'll do a little, or see if I can do a little of this for you. One, two...
So you saw on there, sometimes I was doing these little five-stroke rows filling in when there's a lot of space. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned too much is that you need to make sure you're playing the shaft of the stick for that um, hi-hat open. That activates the hi-hats. And you see how tight they are. That's it. I'm not opening any more than that. All right. Now, the last way to do this, which is uh, very physically demanding, is to play the hi-hat and the snare drum together, a la Roy Haynes style. So uh, if you're going to do this with these rhythms, you're going to have to play a lot of bass drum notes. So let's play this for you at quarter note equals 100. We'll see how far I get before I get tired. One, two, one, two. Getting old. <laughs> you used to be able to do that pretty quick, but not anymore. So that's a really fun way to play these things. Of course, you can do it unison with the cymbal as well. And uh, Tony Williams uses this stuff a lot. Ne not necessarily in the hi-hat, but on the toms and the cymbal. So I hope you enjoyed this little presentation of my hi-hat choke concept. Uh, it's something that everybody should practice, should have a good idea of how it should sound, not too loud, not too much, but also you should be able to put it anywhere you need to. It's really great for reading charts and phrasing certain things as well. Uh, if you're reading a big band chart or anything, you can do long and short notes with your hi-hats. Really, besides playing rolls on the snare drum, it's your longest possible thing that's very easily um, controlled, and you can express yourself with it. So let's uh, play a little and we'll call it a day.